Welcome back. Yet another incredible day for the Mueller probe. Let's start by playing a part of the former FBI acting director's interview with 60 Minutes. Here, Andrew McCabe explaining why he ordered the obstruction of justice probe on the president of the United States. To the man who had just run for the presidency and, and, and won the election for the presidency and who might have done so with the aid of the government of Russia, our most formidable adversary on the world stage. And that was something that troubled me greatly. How long was it after that that you decided to start the obstruction of justice and counterintelligence investigations involving the president? I think the next day I met with the team investigating the Russia cases and uh, I asked the team to go back and conduct an assessment to determine where are we with these efforts and what steps do we need to take going forward. I was very concerned that I was able to put the Russia case on absolutely solid ground in an indelible fashion that were I removed quickly or reassigned or fired, that the case could not be closed or uh, vanish in the night without a trace. There's more, in fact, a lot more. McCabe also saying the Justice Department was so alarmed that Trump was compromised that they discussed whether to recruit cabinet members to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove him from office. Now, they would need half the cabinet, so they were trying to figure out who would possibly go along. And a former Justice Department official says Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein proposed wearing a wire. Think about that. Wearing a wire to secretly record the President of the United States. Rodenstein said he was just kidding, but McCabe says the idea came up many times and was taken seriously. Of course, President Trump, he blasted McCabe over Twitter. He called him, among other things, disgraced. He said McCabe pretends to be a poor little angel, a puppet for James Comey. And again, he pointed out that McCabe's wife was supported by Hillary Clinton in her unsuccessful run for the state legislatorship in Virginia. Now, just for some added color, Trump also suggested that McCabe's wife, quote, he asked him, how does it feel to be a loser that our president? So a ton to unpack here with unbelievable consequences. Let's bring in my next guest, former federal prosecutor Joseph Moreno. He served in the Justice Department's National Security Division. Um, wow. I I'm curious, Joe, did you have any dealings or have any informed opinion on McCabe here prior to both his dismissal and now this book? Hey, Richard, good to join you from our nation's capital. So, Andrew McCabe, I mean, I did not know him personally. I was with the department and with the FBI at various times when he was there, but his reputation was absolutely flawless. This was, he was seen as a career agent who rose through the ranks of the FBI. He was certainly ambitious, but he rose to, the, to management. He was very well respected, became the deputy director, and then ultimately the acting director, as we know. So he had really an unblemished reputation um, up until you know the, the end of his career, which had to do with media contacts unrelated to Russia. So really, though, he comes to us, as with many, you know, many longtime Washington, D.C., Department of Justice and FBI officials with a really good reputation. You know, in that conversation with Scott Pelley, McCabe said for him one of the triggers, my words, was after Trump fired Comey, Trump reached out to McCabe and said, hey, uh, everybody's reacting um, unbelievably well to my decision. They're cheering for me over at Justice. Um, everyone thinks it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Again, I'm paraphrasing. To which point, McCabe was so put off by that, given that he saw people uh, literally crying per his reporting in the hallway, that that was also an impetus to say the president acted here out of maybe political vengeance on Comey here, and I've got to move. I know this isn't the legal um, starting point here, but can you give a little color to that? Why that kind of a comment from a president to the acting, uh, you know, uh, FBI director would, uh, to him at least, set off alarm bells? Well, so as we know, the president can fire the FBI director for virtually any reason or even no reason at all. But it's certainly clear that in the immediate aftermath of President Trump's firing of James Comey, he was clearly searching for a rationale. And we heard a couple of different things. First, the president tried to tie it to the way James Comey had dealt with Secretary Clinton's email investigation the prior year. Then he said it was about morale at the FBI. Now, that contradicted himself because, remember, just a few months earlier, right after he was in 
inaugurated, he said, James Comey did a great job. I want him to stay. So there was a lot of chaos. And then, of course, ultimately what we heard on the Lester Holt interview and in other areas was that it had to do with Russia. So when I say that the president can fire the FBI director for any reason, that's true. It can't be a bad reason, though. It can't be a corrupt reason. And as we saw that explanation start to change and start to sort of evolve into something that seemed possibly more nefarious, that's where then acting director McCabe is saying to himself, OK, something doesn't seem quite right here, and I need to lock in some sort of an investigation before something happens to me. OK. They, at some point, According to McCabe, um, the discussion of the 25th Amendment being invoked here, wearing a wire also, uh, potentially to record conversations with the president. Now, Joe, I don't think I'm breaking ground here. People know that I have tremendous issues with our current commander in chief. Um, and it would take me too long as to get into the litany why. But I don't know. I found it more than a little bit disconcerting that for all those people who talk about deep states and the rest, they got a leg to stand on here if all of a sudden people don't like a duly elected president and all of a sudden they're going to start discussing removing him from office and wearing a wire to go into the Oval. Did that give you pause at all? Am I wrong here to say, wait a minute, forget about the president for the moment. Any president, we the people elect him, it seems not a coup, but they don't like him, they're going to take in their own hands certain actions to remove him? Well, the 25th Amendment, you're right, it's not a coup. It's a, it's a mechanism that's been put in place it, not too long in the past either. It's a relatively recent amendment um, which gives the cabinet and ultimately the Congress that has to weigh in if the president fights back the ability to remove an incapacitated president temporarily. So I, I, my takeaway from this is, is here. I mean, some months ago, this story came up. And if you recall, there was a very tense day here in Washington where it looked like Rod Rosenstein might get fired. And he was heading over to the White House in the aftermath of this report coming out that he had had discussions about possibly wearing a wire. Now, it sounds like his position was that it was in jest. And obviously, he survived that ordeal because he's still the deputy attorney general, at least for now. So it's interesting to hear former acting FBI director McCabe kind of reignite this conversation and say, no, no, it wasn't just con it wasn't just joking. There were actual serious conversations. It sounds like on more than one occasion with more than one person about possibly wearing a wire and whether ultimately the president was fit to serve. So it certainly does give me pause. Given um, the outsized importance and the roles that both McCabe, a Rodenstein, and before him, obviously a Comey held. Put this in context of the Mueller probe, because we already know there's calls here from McCabe to testify under oath on the Hill. Um, where do you think, given the, the, the significance and the severity of the allegations you're getting from McCabe, and we don't know the specifics by any means, or what was potentially here the damning evidence they believed that would have prompted even a discussion of the 25th Amendment, um, do you take any, can you draw any lines here potentially to where this might lead or the focus of Mueller? Well, I think there's two different things here. So, and they, they could be connected or they could be separate. Obviously, Andrew McCabe was sufficiently worried about President Trump's explanation for why he fired James Comey, that he went back to the FBI, you heard it, the same day or the very next day, and opened up a counterintelligence investigation and an obstruction of justice investigation. And ultimately, what he's looking for is, did the president fire James Comey because he was trying to get the pressure of the Russia investigation off his back? So that was sufficiently worrisome enough to Andrew McCabe that he leapt into action. And ultimately, eight days later, that investigation was taken over by Bob Mueller. So I think you have that component of it, the Russia component. Then you have the 25th Amendment component. And this may be related, and it might not be. And that goes to basically, can the president do the job? Is he physically, and more importantly, is he mentally capable? So whether it's the first instance of whether it's Russia-based concerns, or whether it's unrelated just fitness concerns, obviously both are alarming. If you put the both together, it makes it even worse. And last question, um, the revelation that came out about that meeting at the Cigar Bar in New York, uh, Manafort, uh, the Russian in question, and also his old friend, I guess, no longer Mr. Gates. Because it took place in New York City, even if the president pardoned uh, Manafort, is it possible the charges could be brought against him from the New York AG um, or we could go to maybe some other places here and the charges that would be pardon proof, if you will, um, could, be re, could be brought up against him there? 
Good point, Richard. And this is a, a this is a, certainly a danger for anyone that's potentially the receiving and the receiving end of a of a presidential pardon. It may pardon you for certain federal crimes. That doesn't mean that new federal crimes can't be brought. And to your point, it certainly does not mean that state or even local crimes can be brought. And the you know the Manhattan assistant you know, Manhattan District Attorney's Office is very capable, very aggressive. The New York Attorney General's Office has some criminal enforcement abilities, also very aggressive and very capable. So just because Paul Manafort may get a pass at the federal level does not mean he or anyone else, for that matter, are completely off the hook. Joseph Marino, as always, uh, invaluable. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Richard. Always good to be with you. And coming up next, everyone, the latest from D.C. on the efforts to avoid another government shutdown. It looks like we dodged the bullet, but it comes with strings attached. We'll explain.